sourdough is all the rage right now, but how do you get started? I'm going to show you how you start a complete starter from scratch, bringing this back to life. I'm gonna show you the difference of 11 and discard, but most importantly, how to have a good, healthy starter in your home. So you can make your own starter from complete scratch, but if you buy my dehydrated starter, you know that it's gonna come back alive very quickly, and it's just, it's bulletproof. So let's say you bought it, boop boop, came in the mail or you bought it at the store. We're gonna open it up. And what I like to tell everybody is that there's actually extra that's in the um, little pouch. So if you put it in the freezer, that's like food storage for life. So if you ever did kill the starter, for some reason, you could bring it back. And let's just remember the time of COVID where you couldn't even get yeast on the shelves. I mean, seriously. So it's like, uh, hello, we could be making sourdough. So this is really great to have. Now I love these wet jars because they're the perfect size and I'll explain why. So here's your starter size. Here is my starter that needs to be fed today. So I want to just show you in reference, we're gonna talk about all the questions that I constantly get asked, because I know the DMs are rolling through my brain right now. So this is the perfect little starter size. A lot of people get worried that it doesn't come all the way up to the top. It doesn't do that, I promise you. When we feed this and it gets nice and bubbly, you can see that the line, see how it was like up to here, but now it's deflated because it's the next day, she's super hungry, we've got to feed. So what we're doing, it's a two jar method, method right? And before I ever met Ash, I was just dumping my starter into the same jar and it was just like, you were feeding this massive, I mean, it became like this animal, which it's not smart. And the reason it's not is because it's easier for the food to digest in a smaller, so like the gluten is breaking down easier and it just becomes active faster. So we're not feeding just this big, big jar. So this two jar method is beautiful. You need two of these. They come with the little rim and I don't know, these little clips, whatever you wanna call it, but you take that off because it's too tight and it can't breathe when you keep it on. So when you get the jar, you just pop it off. You can keep this for something else, maybe if you wanna use jam or something else later, but it's just like this, so that it gives a little bit of air through the lid, okay? So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna take one jar, and you can either weigh, what I love is that there's a lot of times that people like to just constantly weigh your sourdough or you like to just measure, right? I'm kind of a bold person. Oh no, I didn't get my measuring spoon. I better go get one. But you can weigh it or you can measure it. I give you both options, which I think is really great. I need a spoon, sorry. Luckily, I'm right here in my store. I mean, this is fun. I'm just gonna grab one right here. This is perfect. I don't need to. <laughs> that was fun, shopping in my own store. I feel pretty cool. So, like I said, you can measure or you can weigh it, okay? But let me tell you, it's all about texture, okay? And I'm, I'm showing you how serious that actually is. So this says one tablespoon. We're gonna get one good tablespoon in here, okay? Okay and we're gonna dump it in here. Then we're going to add, it's always the same ratios when you're working with sourdough. It's the same amount of flour and it's the same amount of water. But what I wanna tell you is, that's a super good trick is sometimes you need to feed it a little bit more flour. So we're adding the water, which this is cold water. Normally when you're dealing with yeast, I have a bunch of yeast recipes, it's gotta be warm water, right? To activate the yeast. With sourdough, it's just cold water. So that's super easy. Okay, so now we're gonna take our kamut and not going crazy, we're gonna add a fourth a cup. Then you get a spoon and we're just gonna mix it up. And this is where you just need to just let the rules out and figure this out. It's all about the texture. See how this is thick? You want this thick. And honestly, I want, a little, I want it a little bit thicker just a little bit, okay? Because I believe that it activates way faster. We've learned now with all the different climates, you know, humidity, um, 
or sea level up to, I'm 7,000 feet, right? It doesn't matter, this works everywhere, but I really believe the more thick, the thicker, the better. And I'm saying like thicker than pancake batter. Do you see how thick this is? So if you're ever feeling like it's too runny, I think that's your problem of why it doesn't come active. So then this looks perfect. Put a lid on it, let it sit, and the next day we're going to feed it again and do the same process but into a new clean jar. So I'll show you how I'm gonna feed mine today. But we're, so tomorrow after it's been fed, look how she's already getting bubbly. When you're doing this at home and you're starting completely from scratch, this is gonna take you maybe about four to five days. Think about the temperature of your home. I mean, really ideally for bread, your kitchen needs to be at least 72 degrees. Think about, um, you know, the counters that it's maybe living on, but really it's most important is the texture. And I know for a fact that sometimes they're hungrier. Like me, sometimes I'm hungry, okay? Sometimes I want more food, okay? So, like I said, this is now gonna sit. Tomorrow we're gonna feed it. Don't keep what's left in the jar until you get her active, okay? We don't want that as discard yet until we go through a couple of days, get her nice and active, and then once you're off and running, I'll show you the discard. So, we've got our starter that's gonna grow. This is day one, okay? This is completely from scratch. Now here's my starter. And let me tell you something, sometimes these have a strong smell. <laughs> like my kids, sometimes they're like, wait, whose feet is that when I'm feeding the starter? That's totally fine. Don't be scared of what happens on here. You, this is very difficult to kill, okay? If there's black, if there's the hooch on top that it's called, where it looks like there's liquid on it, okay? It's like the only reason you would ever throw this out is when there's really pink furry mold that looks like it's growing, I've yet to see it. That is the only time that it's like, you, it's ruined, it's destroyed. But once you get this active and happy, you gotta feed it every day for about five days, right? But then after, you can put her in the fridge and she can live in there for like a month, two months, even, obviously the more you feed and the more active you have her, she's gonna be happier. So mine sit on the counter every day. But when I go on vacation, I then put it in the fridge. But I think you get the point. This is not difficult, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the two jar method again, okay? We're gonna take a spoonful. All right? And then we're going to feed again a fourth a cup of flour. It's the same thing and a fourth a cup of cold water, okay? Now we're going to mix, just like this. Remember, the key is that it needs to be thicker. And look, I want a little bit more. This is thick and it's good, but she's a little bit hungrier, like I said today. I don't know, it's the weather comes into play, how cold your house is, different things like that. So this is the kind of thickness I want, okay? Never add more liquid, but you can always add more flour. And another fun trick that we like to say, this, this is how thick, that you could flip it over, that's it. So that's perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna put the lid on it. She's now fed until tomorrow. Does this have to be fed at the exact same time every day? No. No, can you go two days? Can you go a week and not feed her? Yes, yes. I have literally had this sit on my counter sometimes. Three days later, I'm like, oh my gosh, I haven't fed her in three days. It's fine, it's fine. Now let's talk about what's left in the jar, okay? So if I was going to make bread, that's called 11. So you always make sure that you fed your baby. The baby, we can't get rid of the baby. Okay, if we don't feed the baby, we, we are gonna, we're never gonna have sourdough again. So she's fed, we're done. So what are we doing what's left in here? Well, I'm either going to make bread, I'm gonna make 11, or I don't feel like making bread and I just want it as discard. 
which I know that is the craziest word ever, discard, I know. Really, it's flat starter, okay? But it goes into a million things. It can go into your pizza dough. It can go, um, you know, all the things that you don't really need yeast for. The cookies, brownies, Pop-Tarts. I mean, there's so many, so many things. It makes it more moist. It's better on your gut. You're getting a little bit of that sourdough in it. It's not really the taste. You, you can't even tell that there's sourdough in it. So these are the sizes that I like for the leaven and the discard. And you need two because once again, we're gonna take off the, you know, the seal thing and the clips, but this is your discard and your leaven. I'm not going to make bread today, okay? So this is discard. I'm going to put it into here. And then we're gonna put the lid on top and this goes in your fridge. The only thing I will say about the discard is there's a point where it gets too sour for me. And, but that's like over a month old, okay? So I mean, this stays good for a couple of months, but it depends on how much sour you want. But you just put it in your fridge, take it out, fill it back up, as easy as that. So if you wanted to have made 11, in our recipes, we tell you exactly how much. It's more than what you would feed your starter. So I always feed this by with a little spoon. Feeding 11, you use the bigger spoon. It's more of like a heaping tablespoon. And then you put it into this jar and it will tell you three-fourths cup flour, three-fourths cup water. The key to your leaven is that it needs to be super thick too. I promise you, your bread, if it feels like it's too sticky, if you feel like it's too flat, if you feel like it doesn't have enough air bubbles, whatever your issue is with your bread, it's the leaven. It's all about the leaven. I love to make my leaven at night because then when I wake up in the morning, it's ready to go. It's been about eight hours. That's the sweet spot in my house. But right now in the winter, some houses are so cold that it takes 10 hours, 11 hours. So you learn the peak, you'll have good bread. You'll have good bread, but it's all about the leaven, okay? Now you know how to start your own starter. I promise that all my tips and tricks are gonna work for you, but now you need to have some recipes, right? You need to learn how to make the bread. You need the most amazing recipes out there and all the recipes to use for your discard. And that is in my cookbook, For the Love of Sourdough. Everything in this book, you can't believe how yummy. It's not just breads, that's what you need to know. It's a bunch of yummy desserts. You've got pizza, crepes, pasta, so I mean there's dinner ideas in here actually, but all of this that you're making with sourdough, didn't even know you could, right? Anyway, good luck. I cannot wait for you guys to start this journey because you will become obsessed like me, absolutely obsessed.